right now, live at 5, for some, mask mandates are coming back and locals are reacting. I think if the numbers go up, that's what they should do. Plus... Coming up tonight, we'll take a look at why this Canadian wildfire smoke just keeps on returning to the Northland. And later, as many prepare for National Night Out, a local police department has a new way to connect with the community, thanks to a big donation. You're watching Live at 5 on Live Local CBS3. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Kristen Bakke. We begin tonight with some tough news on the COVID front. Health leaders are now recommending you wear a mask in St. Louis County even if you're vaccinated. That guidance came just hours ago as the CDC listed St. Louis County's COVID transmission rate as substantial. The CDC defines that as 50 or more cases a week per 100,000 residents. Right now, St. Louis County is seeing about 54 cases per week. And while it's not a mandate, health leaders say it's a strong recommendation, one they hope everyone will follow, vaccinated or not. The science is showing that uh, fully vaccinated individuals can also transmit the Delta variant specifically. Uh, so there is a risk of um, even people who are fully vaccinated to tra um, transmit the virus to others. Health experts say the vaccine is effective, especially in preventing hospitalizations and deaths. Based on CDC guidance, along with St. Louis County, masks are also recommended in several other Northland counties. In Minnesota, that includes Lake, Aiken, and Crow Wing counties. In Wisconsin, it's Bayfield, Ashland, Sawyer, Washburn, and Burnett counties. Data shows transmission is still low in Carleton, Cook, Itasca, and Kutichin counties, along with Wisconsin's Douglas County. Some universities are following suit. Starting tomorrow, everyone will have to wear a mask on UMD's campus, even if you're vaccinated. That new mandate came down from the University of Minnesota system today. The requirement, uh, it requires masks inside of buildings on all five campuses. You don't have to wear a mask outside. U of M leaders say they hope this move will stop the Delta variant from spreading. We'll hear from UMD officials about that decision coming up tonight at 6. Meanwhile, the Minnesota State Public College System says they'll require masks at campuses in counties with high transmission rates. As of Thursday, that included eight community colleges and two universities, but the number is increasing. As of right now, Lake Superior College is not on that list. Well, today we asked some people in the Twin Ports if they're changing their daily routines based on these rising cases. CBS 3's Quinn Gorham shares their responses. A few short months ago, masks were everywhere and people all over were socially distancing. As vaccination rates rose, mandates were lifted and people's lives slowly returned closer to normal. But with concerns about the Delta variant continuing to rise across the United States, we may begin to once again see those mandates reinstated. I spoke with residents and visitors here in the Twin Ports to see how they feel about the possibility of once again needing to mask up. I think if the numbers go up, that's what they should do. You got to do what you got to do. You got to follow the CDC guidelines. Jason Buckland is visiting Duluth on vacation from Las Vegas. He hasn't started wearing masks out and about just yet. And while Buckland says reinstating mandates isn't ideal, he says he accepts that it might happen soon. I really don't want to close down. It's just too hard, you know close down, start back up. It, it's hard on people. It's hard on the economy. It's hard on everybody. Meanwhile, Sheila Johnson Soma, who lives in Pine County, says it's frustrating to see cases go up while people refuse to be vaccinated. People who don't get vaccinated affect those of us in like the shutdown of libraries, things like that. So it's really frustrating. But not everyone shares that same sentiment. Shannon Johnson, a business owner in Superior, says she herself is vaccinated but understands the reluctancy to get the shot. I do understand the hesitancy. My hesitancy with my own kids is it's an emergency vaccine still. Um, if the FDA fully comes out and says, yes, we completely approve this vaccine, I'm going to line my children up first thing. And as for wearing masks, Johnson doesn't think she'll change her daily routine since she had the vaccine, but will continue to respect the rules for those who haven't gotten the shot. I am vaccinated and I don't feel I need to wear a mask out in public. Um, my children are not, so we have been putting them in masks when we go in stores. 
though Minnesota has not yet announced any plans to reinstate an official mask mandate, as we mentioned, the CDC recommends wearing masks indoors where COVID case transmission is high or substantial. We have a link where you can check out your county's transmission rates on our website. Well, Dave joins us now for a first check of the weather. Dave, hard to believe July is now in the past. It's in the history books, and 100 years from now, when folks take a look at the stats, they won't seem that odd. You know, we just got through the month. It seemed really hot and it seemed really dry, but there were enough cold snaps and rainfalls to counteract some of that perception. So we look at the numbers. Temperature, departure from normal mean. Only 1.2 degree from normal, so a couple of cooler days can really counterbalance the really warm ones. And as far as rain went, you know, at one point in the month, we were going about three inches shy, even getting close to four inches shy. And then we got three good rainfalls of an inch each and the month at one, two, one inch roughly shy of normal. Outlook for August, if you trust long-range forecasters, they think it will continue, though, to be warm and dry. And we should start this week dry thanks to high pressure in control of our area. Again, that old bothersome smoke problem from up north is with us, so the high pressure may, in theory, make the sky clear. It's going to be hazy, and we'll have troubles with that smoke probably through tomorrow afternoon. Tonight's forecast says hazy sky. Tomorrow says high of 83 with a hazy start, but hopefully winds from the southwest help push that smoke back across the border. We'll talk about the odds of that happening in more detail coming up in a few more minutes. Great, thank you, Dave. Well, as Dave mentioned, the smoke from Canadian wildfires continues to settle over Minnesota, creating more warnings for our air quality. Here's a live look over Duluth tonight, where that smoke moved back in after a break in the clouds Sunday. Medical experts say these conditions are especially hard on people with respiratory issues and heart disease. Symptoms like heart palpitations, shortness of breath, or unusual fatigue are possible. So doctors are asking you to take it easy outdoors. As of right now, the statewide air quality alert is still scheduled through tomorrow afternoon. And meanwhile, Senator Amy Klobuchar is asking for federal help as Minnesota continues to see poor air quality. The Democrat is asking the U.S. Department of Agriculture to send air quality specialists to the state. In her letter to the USDA, Klobuchar says Minnesotans are not used to such poor air quality and have questions about the health risks that come with it. She hopes these teams could share the latest updates with the public and offer support to teams monitoring the situation. As we've been reporting, fires in Canada are responsible for that haze and smoke across Northland skies. But exactly where are those fires and how big are they? CBS 3's meteorologist Peter Kevakowskis did some research today to find out. Peter, what'd you learn? Yeah, that's right, Kristen. The hazy, smoky skies have once again began to blanket the Northland. That's on association of some Canadian wildfires that are burning off to our north and have burned nearly 4,000 square miles. Due to our close proximity to those fires, as well as the prevailing northerly winds, Joe Moore with the National Weather Service right here in Duluth says that we'll probably be dealing with those smoky, hazy conditions so good for a good portion of the rest of this week. So while the fires are burning hundreds of miles away, because they're such intense fires putting off a lot of smoke, and because the wind is, is fairly uniform coming at us from the northwest, that smoke can reach us in no time, um, and it can be pretty thick when, when it gets to us. It doesn't disperse as well as it might otherwise. And again, because of our close proximity to those fires, they're just burning just 300 miles or so to our north. And the prevailing northerly winds that we'll see through the rest of the day today, as well as into the day tomorrow, meaning that we're probably going to be dealing with those smoky, hazy skies out there once again for a good portion of the day. Definitely going to want to take it slow if you have any respiratory issues, because we're going to be looking at those hazy skies so continuing throughout the rest of the next two days. Yeah, certainly some good tips. Peter Kavikowski is live for us tonight. Thank you, Peter. Still to come on Live at 5, give a pint and win a pass. How giving blood could win you tickets to the great Minnesota get-together. Details in City by City, up next. You're watching Live at 5 with Kristen Vaki and weather with meteorologist Dave Anderson on Live Local CBS 3.
Get something for nothing at Home Seasonal Concepts. When you spend $4.99, get three years special financing and pay nothing down, nothing for sales tax, and nothing for shipping on select outdoor furnishings. The something for nothing sale, now at Home Seasonal Concepts. At Economy Garages, we build made to order. All the way from here to the Canadian border. We'll take all your rough ideas, turn them into your dreams. Economy of labor and time is what we're all about. Built right and priced right. No need to worry, we'll come to the site. Call Economy Garages when you want it done right. Real encounters with God are life-changing. Join us Sundays at 11.30 for The Message of Good Hope and learn how you can reach your highest potential through a relationship with Christ. Only on the Duluth CW. Yay! Here you go, sweetheart. It's your first savings account. A savings account? Imagine the possibilities. You may dribble me. Imagining a bright future? Let's see how we can help. National Bank of Commerce. We make more possible. Coming up Tuesday on CBS 3 this morning, dredging starts at Park Point. Details on those cleanup efforts. And the air quality warning remains in place for the Northland as well as warm temperatures at the start of August. So wake up with us starting at 5 a.m. If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Now at Homeworld Rugs, thousands of area rugs will be sold up to 67% off when you take an extra 12% off already discounted prices, plus three-year special financing. Hundreds of rugs from $77, room size rugs from $147. The area rug clearance at Homeworld Rugs. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Spirit Mountain tonight on this hazy second day of August. Dave will be in with this week's full forecast in just a few minutes. But first, let's take a look around the region. A registration deadline is approaching for a citywide sale in Hibbing and a weekend for the bees in Carleton. All of that and more as we take you around the Northland, city by city. We start things off in Hayward, Wisconsin tonight, where they will be hosting a blood drive next week, and there is still time to give and win. The blood drive will be held at the Holiday Inn Express on Monday and Tuesday. Monday's drive runs from noon to 6, and Tuesday's runs from 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. All those who donate between July 1st and August 26th will be entered to win tickets to the Minnesota State Fair. Next, we head to Hibbing, where the deadline is approaching to register your home for this year's citywide garage sale. The first annual Chamber citywide garage sale will be Friday, August 20th through Sunday, the 22nd. This Friday, August 6th, is the last day to get your home registered and put on the official list that will be featured around town and in all announcements. For details or information on how to sign up, you can head to our website. And we'll wrap up in Carleton, Minnesota, where they are preparing for a weekend full of music and bees. This Friday and Saturday, the Oldenburg Arts and Cultural Community will be hosting the Honey Bee Festival at the Oldenburg House. The two-day event will be jam-packed with musical acts, craft stands, and informational sessions on pollinators. Another big event will be the Swarm Bike Ride on the Munger Trail. For more information on this weekend's activities, we'll have a link on our website. And if there's something going on in your neighborhood that you think we should know about, send us an email and it might be featured as we go around the Northland, city by city. Still to come on Live at 5, National Night Out is tomorrow. We'll show you the new way the Duluth Police Department will be connecting with the community in just a few minutes. Well, normal temperature is 78 today. We achieved 80. We'll run about 80 to 85 for the week ahead. And of course, right now we have troubles with that Canadian smoke back in place. Hopefully a wind shift tomorrow will help push it back across the border, at least for a little while. It'll be a slow process, though, and we'll take a look at that timeline in more detail, of course, after this break. This show is about connection. Not even 2020 and socially distancing ourselves are going to get in the way of that. Woo! The Kelly Clarkson Show on CBS3. What lies inside all of us is more than data. It's life. What's flowing through America's veins is its diversity. 
And it's those very differences that will lead to answers for generations to come. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers, from a leading financial firm on maximizing your income in retirement. That's right, free. This free book reveals little-known secrets about annuity strategies in simple-to-understand terms that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. And it's free. Call right now for your free book. And as a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. We researched over 1,200 annuities and summarized the rates and benefits of annuities from financially strong insurers. Again, that's annuity do's and don'ts for baby boomers and a free annuity rate report, both absolutely free, for calling Annuity General today. Supplies are limited. Call now. Call 800-816-8219. That's 800-816-8219. Gail King, Anthony Mason, and Tony DeCopo. Weekday mornings on CBS. Your family traditions, culture, and stories are your legacy. So is your health history. Join the All of Us Research Program and share your health information. Through research, your legacy can help build a healthier future for all of us. Pre-order your 2022 Run Boat at RJ Sport Cycle. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by Economy Garages. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Like an unwelcome house guest, we've got that air quality alert back in place. That Canadian wildland fire smoke coming on into the region, and it's affecting Minnesota and Wisconsin this time around, probably through at least 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So, folks with breathing troubles, you'll have to get by until then. By tomorrow afternoon, hopefully a southwesterly wind will push that smoke back across the border and we can put off the problem for at least a little while until the winds shift again. But that's the way it seems to be rolling here this summer. Now we take a look and see what's rolling around right now and we see that hazy sky over the Twin Ports. And at the airport in Duluth, the current temp is 80, about 2 degrees warmer than normal. Relative humidity pretty low at 39% and if it stays that low, of course, we're going to run into wildland fires again ourselves here in our region. There are a couple of rain chances coming by Thursday, Friday, even Saturday, Sunday. We'll talk about those with the seven-day. Uh, current wind, westerly, southwesterly, seven miles per hour. So the slow process of pushing that smoke back has begun, but it may take again till tomorrow afternoon. Air pressure at the moment is on the high side at 30.07 inches of mercury. In fact, there are twin highs over our region right now. Current temps, mid to upper 70s for our friends in the Upper Peninsula. And in Wisconsin and Michigan, we're running 76 to 81 degrees. Hayward, the cool spot for a change, and Superior, the warm spot. So tables can turn once in a while. In Minnesota, we see some 80s, like in Two Harbors, upper 70s, like from Cloquet to Moose Lake, and uh, roughly that range, 77 to 81 degrees for the Iron Ranges and Borderland. High temps this week likely will run the range of 80 to 85 degrees. Well, twin high pressure systems in place, keeping things on the sunnier side, technically. Up above the haze, of course, that's where the sunshine is. With two highs sinking, pushing cloud development down, that's creating a void then for the smoke to come in and for the smoke to be pushed down to the ground where we have to breathe it. So that's why the trouble could be with us through probably tomorrow afternoon. But by Wednesday, it should be fully blown sunshine once again, at least for a little while. Then later on this week, Thursday and Friday, twin low pressure systems will be coming our way, bringing us thunderstorm chances for Thursday and Friday, and maybe Saturday and Sunday too. Right now, they're really just troughs, which we could call colloquially a, a baby low pressure system, but they may spin into actual low pressure systems by the time they get here. So we are looking at more chances for showers and thunderstorms. And if they threaten to become severe like last week's, of course, we'll keep you abreast of that here at CBS 3. Tonight's Minnesota forecast says low temperatures will run about 52 inland to 60 by the lake, and it'll be hazy and smoky for the sky conditions above. Similar conditions will be with us for Wisconsin, though the UP seems to be off the hook for the moment as far as the haze goes. Low temps there, 55 to 57. For tomorrow, Wisconsin-Michigan highs 83 to 86. And the heat of the day may trigger a 20% chance for afternoon, early evening convective showers, isolated thunderstorms. But I think the air pressure will be high enough in Minnesota where it'll be in the 80s in general. And it'll be sunny, slowly becoming sunny, 
as the wind shift hopefully pushes away the smoke. Now, for the extended forecast here, when those two lows break loose and get towards us, we have rain chances from Thursday on through Sunday, 30 to 60 percent chances for payoff. And again, too early to tell if they'll be severe this time around, but after the other week, Kristen, boy, we're on our toes and we're ready to jump into action if need be. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it'll be, we'll hope for a bit of a calmer week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well, hopefully we get the rain we need yes. without all the light show. Without the damage. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dave. A former Barnum girls basketball coach has been offered a plea deal. After accusations, he sexually assaulted a player. Andrew Palmer was arrested back in January. According to court records, the 33-year-old engaged in sexual contact with a 17-year-old girl on three separate occasions. The Carleton County attorney says the details of the plea deal are private. Palmer is expected to consider the state's offer until his next court hearing at the end of September. The Duluth Police Department has a new way to connect with the community thanks to a big donation. The department now has a bus donated by the Duluth Transit Authority. A justice assistance grant which focuses on community policing projects also played a role. The new bus will hit the road Tuesday for Duluth's annual National Night Out celebration. The events are meant to help strengthen community police relationships, and they're being held all across the Northland tomorrow. We'll have details about some of the gatherings on our website. And by the way, Duluth Police are also asking for your help naming the new bus. You can vote on the Duluth Police Department's Facebook page. Well, it's that time of the show where we get to talk about adoptable pets, and today's pet comes to us from Northwoods Humane Society. But today is all about the dogs. Recently, the shelter stepped in to help two other shelters, and they are now nearly full themselves. All the dogs you've seen on your screen are available and ready to find loving new homes. Pre-adoption forms must be filled out before coming to meet your future best Friend. If you'd like to set up an appointment to adopt any of these dogs, then you can call the number on your screen. Let's find them a home. Still to come, the latest on the Senate infrastructure bill as the bipartisan bill is nearing a vote. Play It Again Sports carries the largest selection of both new and quality used ice hockey equipment, skates, sticks, and goalie gear you need to play the game. With lacrosse being the fastest growing sport in the Northland, trust their knowledgeable staff to outfit you with the right equipment at the right price. Play It Again Sports, Duluth and Superior. There's a safe way to protect kids 12 and up from COVID-19. So why did we get her a COVID-19 vaccine? Because I miss school. To get ready for baseball season. So nothing's holding them back. Help your kids be kids again, safely. Visit vaccines.gov to find a COVID-19 vaccine near you or call 211 to learn more. Storm damage happens, and when it does, turn to Peak Construction Roof, the Northland storm damage experts. Peak simplifies the process for you every step of the way. With our skilled technicians, we quickly survey the situation to determine the best course of action. We offer insurance claims assistance to eliminate insurance confusion. Plus, we offer free storm damage inspections. Call Peak today to set up your free storm damage inspection, and let us take care of you. Competition starts now. I was like, game on. Let's do this. Like a ninja. I am just the hot mess express. I got choked up a little bit. The pressure is turned up. Uh, I'm coming in this house to win. I want, I want, I want. New Big Brother, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday. I'm so excited. On CBS. Go to the ends of the earth. Very pleasant place to be. I couldn't ask for anything more. And reach for the stars. Where's the ask? <laughs> oh, this is great. <laughs> do you still love it? I do. But oh, wait, there's more. Experience thought-provoking. It was literally like Groundhog Day. I do know what makes a good movie. Innovative. It's hard not to overflow. And truly original reporting. Because there's always something new under the sun. On CBS Sunday Morning. Do you think it's time for schools to reopen? There is some positive breaking news. We've got a lot of important new information for you and your family.
heart attacks and strokes happen, even in the midst of COVID-19. And at least one will occur while you're watching this. Heart attacks and strokes are medical emergencies. If you experience symptoms of a heart attack or stroke, do not delay seeking care. Call 911 immediately. Hospitals are prepared and can safely treat you. Visit cdc.gov slash coronavirus to learn more. The Senate introduced the text of the roughly $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill last night, a bill which could be passed this week. Natalie Brand has more from Capitol Hill. The Senate is on track to vote on the roughly $1 trillion infrastructure bill this week after weeks of negotiations. Our colleagues' draft text provides a good and important jumping off point for what needs to be a robust and bipartisan process out here on the floor. The bill includes new funding to fix roads and bridges, public transit, to expand broadband internet access, and to upgrade the water system. While creating millions of new jobs, a lot of them without college degrees at the same time. The bipartisan legislation does not raise any new taxes, but is paid for largely by redirecting unused COVID relief money and by enforcing tax laws, including on cryptocurrencies. This is a bill which is paid for and that gives the American people say they desperately need, and that is an upgrade in our infrastructure. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says as soon as the physical infrastructure bill is passed, Democrats will take up the $3.5 trillion budget resolution focused on what they're calling human infrastructure, such as child care. If the Senate does not pass the reconciliation bill, we will uphold our end of the bargain and not pass the bipartisan bill until we get all of these investments in. Some moderate Democrats say the House should vote on physical infrastructure regardless of the reconciliation bill. I've always believed that everything should, should rise or fall on its own merits. Democrats need the support of moderates such as West Virginia's Joe Manchin and Arizona's Kirsten Cinema to pass the reconciliation bill in the Senate without GOP support. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz put out a statement about the bill today, saying in part it is a win for Minnesota, and he expects the bill will create good-paying jobs while providing the foundation for communities across the state to thrive. We've got a lot of news to cover tonight. The new study that links increased alcohol use during the pandemic and cancer, the number of drinks that could put you at risk. Plus a story tonight for animal lovers when Americans donate to the ASPCA. Where does the money actually go? What CBS News uncovered. And the spirit of the games, how fierce rivals come together in the name of sportsmanship. The CBS Evening News is now just minutes away. CBS 3 closed captioning is brought to you by Essentia Health Pharmacies. Keeping things safe, simple, and convenient through mail, local delivery, drive through and curbside pickup services. Hi, I'm Dr. John Bolins. And I'm Ann Nolette. And we're Advanced Surgical Associates of Northern Minnesota. As the most experienced robotic team in the Northland, we wanted to provide an alternative to the traditional surgical practices that the hospitals offer. Robotic assisted surgery allows more complex surgeries through small incisions with lower chances of infection. We provide individualized and personalized care so you can have a shorter hospital stay, experience less pain, and recover quicker. You can learn more online at mnsurgery.com or by giving us a call today. Uh-oh, that food container won't contain your food, so you mess with cling wraps and foil, hoping food won't spoil. Well, not anymore. Now there's Stretch and Fresh Containers, the amazing food storage containers with stretch and fit lids that let you store more. Even the odd-shaped foods you couldn't put in containers before. Just stretch over the food and snap lock the lid to keep food fresh. There's even a freshness date dial to track storage time. It comes in the sizes you need to store all the foods you want with amazing storage capacity. It's freezer and microwave safe. And the containers nest for compact stack space-saving storage. And right now, the six-piece set is yours for just $19.95, and the shipping is free. But wait, call now, and we'll double the offer and send a second set. Just pay a separate fee. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-378-1232 or go to TryStretchAndFresh.com. That's 1-800-378-1232 or order online at TryStretchAndFresh.com. Show. 
show is about connection. Not even 2020 and socially distancing ourselves are going to get in the way of that. Are we six feet apart? Let's just check it out. <laughs> Watch the Kelly Clarkson Show. Woo! It feels good. The Kelly Clarkson Show on CBS3. If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Canal Park on this Monday evening. Let's take a look back at today's top story and we'll see what's coming up tonight at 6. Tonight at 5, we learned more as health leaders are now recommending you wear a mask in St. Louis County, even if you're vaccinated. The county's transmission rate is now listed by the CDC as substantial. To see how your county is faring, we'll have a link on our website. And coming up tonight at 6, before St. Louis County made their mask recommendation, the University of Minnesota system announced all of its campuses would return to masking up regardless of vaccination status. Tonight, we'll hear from UMD leaders about what that means for students and faculty returning this fall. That's your news at 5. The CBS Evening News is up next. We'll see you back here at 6.